Hi again, everyone. Welcome to another episode of RV Business Capital Talk. I'm Rick Kessler. He's Sherman Goldenberg. And joining us today is John Tingatella, president of RV Designer. John, thanks so much for joining us. My pleasure, Rick. Sherman, great to be here. What can I do for you today? Well, how about a quick overview of RV Designer? I, I know the core product is replacement hardware, but that's really, that's really shortchanging what, exactly everything you do. <laughs> Well, thank you. Yes, uh, we we are at uh, at our core. We're a supplier of aftermarket parts to the RV aftermarket, uh, primarily through uh, two step distribution and in the traditional brick and mortar world that we all grew up in, uh, with uh, distributors and and RV dealers, uh, of course, then touching the RV consumer. John, where are you located? We are in Wheeling, Illinois. Uh, we're about 15 miles north of O'Hare in, uh, in Cook County, not far from uh, the great city of Chicago. <laughs> you meant that seriously, correct? I do. I do. I love Chicago. It's, uh, it's a terrific town, particularly this time of year when the sun is shining <laughs> and there's no ice on the lake. <laughs> that's what, right. that's what well, it's like. Thank you, word. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So, John, let's talk about the aftermarket and in particular, the aftermarket conference that's coming up next month in San Antonio. Um, it's been around a long time. It's been affiliated with RVIA now for the last several years. Um, give us a quick overview, if you don't mind, because it has a little bit of a unique format than what most people might uh, realize. Yes, absolutely, Rick. No problem. I, I'll be honored to do that. Um, and I will take off my RV designer company hat and put on my uh, industry association hat. We in the aftermarket, one of our major missions uh, for our segment uh, going forward is how do we perform in such a way as that we do really good for that consumer, particularly the newbie, that we keep them as RVers going forward? A lot of people jumped in and they may have jumped in not fully understanding maybe where they were going. All they saw was this beautiful vehicle and this opportunity to do some pretty cool stuff. And we want to give them the best opportunity to have good future satisfaction and stay an RVer. So as far as the conference is concerned, uh, as you mentioned, Rick, it's been going on for, uh, I think this is our 51st mm -hmm. uh, coming up. And um each year, the conference uh, uh, happens in uh, usually the second week of August somewhere. This year, it's going to be in San Antonio, Texas, at the Embassy Suites downtown by the Riverwalk, which is all cool stuff. Uh, but the conference essentially, it, at its core, historically has brought suppliers, people like myself, manufacturers or, 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 or uh, firms that uh, build and deliver products to the marketplace, and distributors, that, that wholesale distributor that takes our product and then uh, distributes on either a local, regional, national basis to the retailers in, in the various and sundry different areas of the country. Um, that has at its core been what we've been. It's been a very trade-oriented set of conversations, both small meetings and large meetings. Um, and that's, that's a really wonderful thing um, as a result of that magnificent relationships have developed. We're great at networking. And this niche has a wonderful loyalty and legacy attached to it because we've done this very well. We're very good at that trade aspect. What we've tried to do in recent years, and, and one of my missions uh, in, in, in doing what I'm doing is, in addition to that great trade connection we have, is to layer on another competency. How do we do as good for the trade, I'm sorry, do as good for the consumer as we do for the trade. You know, as a supplier, I'm a few steps removed from that consumer. I get it. But ultimately, a consumer is going to open my package, grab my product, install it, and they're going to either be happy with it or not happy with it. And ultimately, there's really only one customer. It's that guy. It's the owner of the, it's the, or, or gal, I don't mean to, <laughs> I don't mean to, you know, discriminate. But you know what? They're the ones who are putting the money down. And I learned a long time ago in this industry, yeah, my distributors and my dealers to a degree can be customers and we treat them with complete respect. And yes, we transact with them and all that. But there's only one customer. It's the RVer. We need to get better at that. So our mission in terms of layering on that, that, secondary, that second competency is how do we understand, connect with, and serve that consumer? 
Um, so we're working on it. Last year, um, which was the first conference in a while because of COVID, we all met in Atlanta and it was wonderful to get together again, but we tried something different. On day two, Wednesday, we, we added a, a two hour workshop uh, in the middle of the afternoon. And we said, okay, everybody, put your meetings on hold if you can. Not everybody did, but put your meetings on hold if you can. And come and let's have a large group. And Bill Baker from RVIA, who's the who's the data guru, and myself, we facilitated a conversation. I had about 70 attendees. We had, I think, a dozen actual tables with table captains. And we had a, a it was kind of a guided discussion, a facilitated discussion. But everybody rolled up their sleeves and we talked about how do we how do we engage the consumer. Uh, we generated an enormous amount of really good content. And that content was was the underpinning, it was the foundation for the formation of a consumer outreach task force, which wants to operationalize this vision of getting closer to the to the uh, consumer. This year, we're going to do something similar, but we're going to actually have a keynote speaker, John Jans from uh, Duct Tape Marketing. He's going to be our keynote speaker at lunch that day. And then he and I are going to facilitate the, the two-hour workshop that will go right after lunch. And, you know, we're going to get a little more granular. And the idea we're going to try and you know answer a few questions you know how do consumers see us how do we find out how they see us and how do we turn consumers into fans now again we're doing association work so when i leave there i as a member in a business and that's that's part of this thing I'm, I'll have the judgment to say, did I have take home value? Can I take that and implement that into my, my, my daily business and do better at this overall mission? And that's, that's what we call member value. You know, the idea is to deliver that so the attendees can have some great take home value. So long answer to a short question. <laughs> it's, a com it's a combination of uh, wonderful trade meetings you know, schedule trade meetings, mostly between suppliers and distributors. There will be some other guests. We'll have some other association people there. We'll have RVTI, RVTI will be there. RVWA will be there. There'll be some dealers sprinkled in to kind of give us a nice mix. Uh, so we'll have a, we'll have a, a pretty, pretty good grouping. Um, and then of course, really trying to continue to dig into learning and serving the consumer. So that in a nutshell is what we hope to accomplish over three days, uh, the week of August 8th in San Antonio. It, the the, the uh, aftermarket event itself has a, what for a lot of us is a rather unusual format. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Oh, yeah. The speed dating. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I love the, I, lo I love the, uh, the phrase speed dating. Yeah. What it is, uh, Sherman is the, the real core of those trade connections occurs in a series of usually 30 minute meetings. I think you can double up and go more than that, but it's a series of 30 minute meetings where the distributors in particular are, they're the ones on the move. Um, as a supplier, we kind of stay still. We have a room and a suite and we set up our put some products out we get some programs and literature and we decide what we're going to talk about so the distributor shows up at the top of the hour we got 30 minutes and the clock the clock is ticking and um you know, we have an agenda, we walk through things and we don't solve the world's ills. No, you know, nobody's going to solve world hunger in, in 30 minutes, but it's a it's a great way to introduce some new products introduce some new programs, uh, touch on a few, you know, uh, transactional issues. And usually what we'll do then is we'll schedule some follow-up discussions after the fact, once we've, you know, kind of unearthed some opportunities. That really is the core of the conference. It's three days of that, of, of, a, of a, a schedule uh, from morning till, till five or six at night where we're, we're hitting these 30 minute meetings. As suppliers, we don't have as full a uh, schedule as distributors because there's a lot more suppliers than there are distributors. It's just it's just math. But we go to great lengths to um, to make it as efficient and as as productive as possible. And I can tell you from my my standpoint, I bring my two sales managers. There's three of us, and uh, we work it pretty hard. We make those conversations meaningful, and um, we do our best to to fill our schedule and and make it as as memorable for everybody as possible. I know we're looking forward to it. We're bringing a team out there. We're, we've already, uh, what, cool. meetings have been going back and forth now for about uh, a week now. And cool. it's, it's uh, you know, if, it's, if we're going to use the speed dating analogy, it's, it's, it's nice that people are swiping right for us 
or there not. you go. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long time since I even knew what that meant. But um, uh, I think I, I think the point is well taken, Rick. And really, if you're a supplier or a distributor or a media, fo- you know, media folks like you guys, we can meet the entire niche, the entire industry, the entire niche in three days. Yeah. And yeah, it's a little intense and, you know, you, you, you shake a lot of hands and all that. Um, but what a wonderful way to to have tremendous coverage and contact in a very concentrated event. And uh, you know what? With that, I'm looking at the time and, and we probably ought to wrap this up. It's we've covered a lot of ground. John, you've covered a lot of ground for us. Thank you. <laughs> Um, there's still registration is still open. There's still slots available. I know that I talked with Jeremy not that long ago. Um, it's a good event. It's a great event. And and, uh, if they haven't already, the people ought to take a look at it. Absolutely. And I will emphasize, I was focusing on the business aspect. There's also some, certainly some socialization. There's a golf (laughs) tournament uh, scheduled for Monday. That's always extremely popular. looks like it's going to be well attended this year. We have um, networking events, um, I think the first and last evening, and certainly some very good lunches. But more than anything else, people people just re-engage those connections in the hallways and the lobby, certainly in our meetings. And um, it's just a wonderful way to crank, crank things back up in this incredibly wonderful market that we're in. I think the, there's nothing that could be said that could top that. <laughs> My pleasure. Guys, Sherm, it's, any- it's, it's, a, it's a pleasure. Thank you. Anything else, Sherm? Well, I, I, if you don't mind, one, sure. one, one quick uh, side road before we sign off. Uh, it's the question that's on everybody's mind in this industry at the moment. Where the heck are we headed? And from your vantage point, uh, you know, in a nutshell, where do you see the industry, your sector included, uh, headed uh, this year and, and into next? Yeah, um, Sherman, I will do my best. I'll tell you what I see, uh, very honestly. But my, my, crystal ball is about as clouded as everyone else. Uh, we're in uncharted waters right now. Um, you know, we, we've come off a, few, a couple of years of just intense, intense industry growth. Um, the market certainly has cooled and it is in a cooling effect right now. I say cooled, you know, we've all been around long enough to know we've seen worse than cooled in the past. Um, but it is a market correction right now. Um, we're very encouraged because the demographics that brought us into COVID were very strong. The demographics have improved since COVID. The average age of the RVer has come down uh, and we're seeing an influx of new people into our marketplace. That's healthy. That's good. That speaks to the long-term health of the marketplace. Where it's going to go in the next 6, 12, 18 months, uh, I, I, my... My information is as good as what what we share at the industry level, and uh, the industry has some some pretty good um, information coming out. I I would go with that, but I would say anecdotally, where I stand as a supplier, um, in the aftermarket, the aftermarket has cooled as well in recent months. We've put a lot of product into the marketplace in the last 12 months, uh, and it's moving through. Um, but what we're noticing is as the industry cools and corrects at the OE level, that affects foot traffic in stores, which certainly affects the world that we live in. Um, I'm not going to lie. I don't think four, five, six dollar gas around the country is a good thing. I don't think it's necessarily terrible. I don't think it destroys the market because people are still continuing to utilize their their RVs in in the summer months and we'll continue on with that. And there's a fair amount of uncertainty in the overall economy in the world. I mean, those are realities. I wish that wasn't the case, but it is the case. So there's a lot of cloudiness out there, but I, I, I lock on to the fact that demographics are good. The industry is healthy. Products are being used. There's a lot of wonderful places to go in this country and our, our, our market, our product, our sport, so to speak, delivers, delivers that, that, that benefit. So um, we need to, we need to probably buckle down for the rest of 2022 and um, continue to do the things that, that we know are correct. So uh, I'm encouraged, but like everyone else, you know, we're rolling with the flow. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Seriously. uh, I, I, I'm, making a habit of hearing these uh these analyses uh rick take her away okay um 
for anyone who's made it this far in the video, uh, John did say that he's going to ride a mechanical bull in San Antonio. <laughs> Now, John and Bull can be used in the same sentence in a lot of ways, but I don't know about writing. <laughs> okay, I might have made that up. Uh, no, John, seriously, thank you very, very much for your time. Uh, looking forward to seeing you next month. Absolutely, my pleasure. And to everyone in the industry, come on to San Antonio. Let's have a wonderful event. And um, uh, let's, en let's enjoy the, the, the fruits of this incredible market that we're in. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you.